Hello YouTube chess lovers and my friends this is Gunjan here and today we are going to learn how to defeat Accelerated Dragon. Now in recent years Accelerated Dragon become very very popular and it's one of the very interesting and dynamic Sicilian defense position. Now the system I'm going to show you against the Accelerated Dragon which is kind of odd and that's why it's very hard for your opponent to come out with exact move orders. Okay, let's start. So white will start with the move e4 and black will reply with the c5 and here I'm recommending knight to f3 and after black respond with knight to c6 here we will play knight to c3. Now the normal moves for the accelerated dragon is g6 but here comes a big shock for your opponent because here we are not going to play d4 or going back to the main line of the accelerated dragon but we will shock him with this move which is h4 and now you can see the idea is very simple we want to play h5 and embarrass the king side of the black uh, let's see what happens if the accelerated dragon player carries out his routine moves so for example the routine moves here for the accelerated dragon player is bishop to g7 after that we will play h5 and if now knight f6 then here comes the blow which is h6 <laughs> and now you can see that bishop has no square except he has to go back and once the bishop goes to the f8 not only it undevelop a piece but it also create a long time problem for the black and that means black king will remain in the center for a long time and look at our pawn on h6 it's a big monster so that is completely out of the question so black cannot play its normal moves so that means here black has to play this move which is knight to f6 but here the lightning strikes from the different direction because now we are going to shock him once again with this move which is e5 now at first sight it looks like it's not possible for white because after knight to g4 attacking the pawn if white defends the pawn with the queen to e2 then black can respond with the bishop to g7 and that means that pawn is a goner but however that's not white's idea the white's main idea is when black plays knight to g4 white wants to play this move which is h5 and now there are few reply over here for the black let's take the first one which is but obvious one uh, black will take the pawn why not if knight g cross e5 then this will be the last time your opponent is going to take the pawn because we have a very very forcing sequence right now which give a plus position for white before we go on uh, if you pause the video and find out a winning sequence for the white okay I hope you find out the winning sequence and it runs like this so white will play knight cross knight and when black recapture the knight white will play f4 now you can see that knight has only one square so when the knight goes back to c6 we'll play h cross g6 and now you can see the h pawn is right now pinned so black has to forcefully capture with f pawn so f cross g6 and now I hope you find this move which is bishop to d3 <laughs> and how the hell on the earth black will defend that threat the only logical reply looks like uh, bishop to g7 but I wonder if you can spot an uh, amazing move over here okay the amazing move is rook takes h7 so it, it's a bombarding on the neighborhood and uh, if the rook takes rook then we have this move bishop takes g6 and not only white regain the piece but black king will lost the castle rights and also white will be a pawn up so this will be a great game for the white so that means uh, knight cross e5 is not possible for the black so that leads to only sensible reply which is at this point black has to play bishop to g7 and ignoring the e pawn 
but against this white has a very cunning idea and that start with the move knight to g5 and now you can see our white queen is attacking the black knight now here black has a few options in the first option if the black knight retrieved to the passive squares then white has a very good reply with the move f4 and now you can see white has a very good center and not only that white has a tremendous pressure on the h file and that will give great advantage to the white in second option if black knight takes the pawn so for example knight g cross e5 then against this we have a very amazing move which is h cross g6 and now if the f cross g6 or the knight cross g6 then that leads to the positional disaster for the black that means white will have a great attack on the h file if the black king castle shot so the most logical reply after the h cross g6 is to take with the h pawn but here white will first exchange the pair of the rook rook takes rook and bishop takes rook here white will play f4 and now you can see that knight is trapped it does not have any good squares so the only good reply left for the black is to play f6 but after this white will simply play knight to d4 and when the knight black knight goes to the only square which is knight to f7 i give you a few seconds can you find a amazing move over here which can give a great advantage to the white okay the move is queen to g4 <laughs> and uh, first side it looks like it's not possible because here black can win a piece by two different way let's uh, look at them each by turn for example our first move by the black will be very obvious f5 attacking the two pieces but now white can simply capture the g6 if your opponent foolishly take the knight then that leads to checkmate so that's not possible and another reply which is here if your opponent or the black play d5 then again white can capture the pawn and after d cross e4 queen check and the king goes to the d7 you can see not only white can regain the knight but black king can hardly describe as a safe and to give you an illustration i can show you one of my own game which can give you an idea how dangerous this position is for the black so in one of my game my opponent played knight to b4 now attacking my c2 square and not only that it's it will fork my rook and the king but here i played a very cunning move which is i invite him to take the rook and i played queen to c4 he just captured my pawn and after i play king to d1 he captured my rook and i give you a few seconds can you identify a sequence where you can get black queen over here okay the move is first of all queen to d5 check and now black has a two options if the king goes to the c7 then this will nab the queen immediately so once the king moves then we can get the queen so that's the first option and second option the very obvious response is king to e8 but after this we have a very good move which is bishop to b5 check and now you can see if black foolishly play bishop to d7 then that leads to checkmate so that's not possible and if the king runs away to f8 we get the black queen so see how much dangerous these positions are for second player okay let's look at the last option where here it is possible that black can play moves such as d6 trying to protect the knight with the bishop but this is the most dangerous scenario for the black because i give you a couple of seconds try to find a very amazing move over here okay the move is e6 so after e6 it will cut the communication of the knight and the bishop that means our queen is again attacking the knight and not only that our two pieces are attacking the f7 square and this is the disaster position of the black so by playing this kind of cunning moors not only white can trick the black in exited dragon 
but in many lines as I have demonstrated over here you can get a very good positions and there are many traps exist as well and I give you guarantee many of your opponents will be fall into that I hope now you will feel confident against the Exited Dragon best of luck for trying the system against your opponent and feel free to comment on my video I'll meet you soon bye